Good morning to all. Welcome to worship this day as we prepare our hearts to worship and praise our Savior. We'll follow the order of worship as on the screens. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and of one another. I confess to God Almighty before the whole company of heaven and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed by my fault, by my own fault, by my own grievous fault. Wherefore, I pray God Almighty to have mercy on me, forgive me all my sins, and bring me to everlasting life. Amen. And we join together. I confess to God Almighty, for the Lord of the Lord, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in the thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my own fault, by my own grievous fault. Wherefore, I pray, God Almighty, to have mercy on me, forgive me all my sins, and bring me to everlasting life. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you pardon, forgiveness, and remission of all your sins. We join together in a psalm of thanksgiving, a psalm fulfilled by Jesus and in part fulfilled on this day, Maundy Thursday. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord. Many, Lord my God, are the wonders you have done, the things you planned for us. Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but my ears you have opened. Then I said, Here I am, I have come. It is written about me in the scroll. I desire to do your will, O my God. Your law is within my heart. Do not withhold your mercy from me, Lord. May your love and faithfulness always protect me. Be pleased to save me, Lord. Lord, You are my help and my deliverer. The words of Scripture for our consideration today are taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 26, a portion of the account of Maundy Thursday evening. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little farther, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour? He asked Peter. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away a second time and prayed. My father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. When he came back, he found again them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away once more and prayed the third time, saying the same thing. 
Then he returned to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour has come, and the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. The Gospel of our Lord. Dear friends in Jesus, a young father in his late 20s kneels beside the bed of his five-year-old daughter. But these evening prayers are not like the usual ones. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. No, this time the bedside prayers are hospital bedside prayers. And as the father kneels beside the bed of his daughter, he pleads, Lord, Please, take this away. Lord, please, make this stop. Please. A 17-year-old junior in high school nearly crumbles onto her bed. One thing after another has built up over previous days. Test after test after test after test. It's that time of the year. She has tried hard. She wants to do well. She wants to succeed. She wants to get good grades. She wants to have all of this kind of add up to her future dreams and aspirations for college and for career, but one pressure after another, not only her own internal pressure to succeed, but also parental pressure to always exceed expectations and to excel. It's all adding up. But the biggest problem is that tomorrow is that ACT test. And she falls to her bed and she prays, Lord, please take this pressure off of me. Lord, please take this anxiety away from me, these worries, these doubts. Lord, please. Do you know those moments? What have those moments been for you? Pleading, God, please take this away. My grandma, my uncle, my parent has cancer. Have you been a young child or a middle school age child pleading, Lord, please take this problem away from my parents, not a divorce, Lord, please. Have you, faculty and staff, been a parent or a sibling and pleaded for a dying family member? Perhaps you can think of a time in this last year, we almost need not talk about it anymore, but it keeps coming up, a pandemic. Lord, please, take it away. It's time. It's time to go back to what's normal and fun. Begging about injustice in the world pleading for relationships in your lives. And in those moments, ready to beg and to plead and falling to our knees, God, please help. In those moments that we pray, Satan himself is ready to pray on you. And very quickly, the doubts are whispered into your ears as the worries fill your heart and mind and the questions come flooding through. Why won't God do anything about this? When will this change? How can this be better? And questions turn into fear and fear turns into anger. Stop this now! Why don't you do something? Do you know those moments? I know those moments. Do you know who else knows those moments? Jesus. As we just heard in the gospel on this day, Maundy Thursday, named after the command, the mandate that Jesus gave, do this in remembrance of me. After that last supper, they went to the Garden of Gethsemane and we heard the words that he took his three beloved disciples, Peter, James, and John, to pray. And we heard this. Jesus began to be sorrowful and troubled. His heart, his mind were all stirred up 
filled with the pressure of what was coming, and he said to them, my soul is overwhelmed. Uh, Literally, his soul, his heart is surrounded by grief. How much? To the point of death, not only because he knows death is coming, but to the point that it's just overwhelming and unbearable. As true God, he knows what's coming in the next hours, even the next minutes. And yet, as true man, he knows how awful it's going to be. And so he steps aside and he does something familiar to all of us. He begs and he pleads, My Father, if it's possible, may this cup, this cup of wrath and anger and punishment for sin that's about to be poured out, may this be taken from me. Think for a moment how often your prayers just like this turn into the selfish request. I'm done with this, Lord. This is not right. Lord, my, may my will be done because I know what's best. And yet here we see our perfect Savior fall into his knees as humble human, yet with the divine prayer, not as I will, but as you will. He gets up from this prayer. He returns to his, his disciples. And if, if you had a friend ask you, you know, I'm in a lot of problems right now. I'm in a lot of trouble. I need you to just help me out. Just keep watching and pray. Wouldn't you maybe do everything in your power to help, to watch, to pray? And what does Jesus find? His disciples fast asleep, not once, not twice, three times. And so he returns to his spot of prayer. I appreciate this picture that depicts the grief of Jesus. If you could see clearly and closely with the drops of blood on his forehead, which by the way is a real medical condition, though rare, hematohydrosis, so overwhelmed that you can sweat drops of blood. And he, he pleads and begs again. And this time he, he says this, My father, if it's not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. He rises from prayer and finds his disciples sleeping that third time and immediately he knows the answer. The answer to this prayer, take it away but your will be done. As he looks and there down the pathway of the garden, he sees the Jewish leaders and the Roman soldiers and Judas coming to betray. And so on this night, Maundy Thursday, it begins as his disciples and friends desert him or betray him, as his own people reject him and accuse him, as to the world he came to redeem, beat him and batter him and mock him and sentence him, and he goes to a cross to suffer and die. And there, the Savior drank it all. That cup of wrath and punishment stored up as the wages for sin, the punishment that each of us bears as an imperfect person, as a, as a person suffering through sin, as a person so selfish and, and pointing fingers of doubt to God, there the Savior drank the entire cup so that you and I would not have one drop. A perfect Savior in our place in the garden offering the perfect prayer and then going to the cross to offer his perfect life to die for you and for me and then to rise on that Sunday in victory. Friends, as we enter these holy days of this holy weekend, follow with awe and wonder your Savior on this night. See him in anguish. See him in prayer, but see him there for you as he offers his perfect life to take your place and to wash you clean of what all you have done, to drink the cup for you and in your place so that you can drink a cup of victory with your Savior one day. This coming Sunday morning, we will celebrate and we will shout and we will sing our praises to our risen and victorious King, but we know we're not in heaven yet. And so, friends, you'll still have these moments in a world filled with sin, tattered and torn, 
in a world filled with sinners, we'll still have these moments falling to our knees and begging and pleading about a pandemic, about cancer, about pressures and anxieties and worries. But each time we beg and plead, we know that because our Savior did it perfectly for us, now we can do it too. Because He prayed and obeyed the will of His Father, now the Father will listen to us in love. And because that tomb is empty, we know that when we offer these prayers, there's peace. No matter the trouble, no matter the hardship, no matter the sorrow, there's peace. Knowing a victory that is ours in Jesus and a heavenly home that waits for us. May this holy weekend be filled with awe, wonder, and joy as you watch the Savior drink it all so that you can drink at the feast of the Lamb in heaven. God be with us this weekend. Amen. We continue our worship with an anthem to see the King of heaven fall. Soloists will sing the first two stanzas. You're all invited to join in the singing of stanza three. To see the King of heaven fall in anguish to his knees. The light and hope of all the world now overwhelmed with grief. What nameless horrors must he see to cry out in the garden, O oh, take this cup away from me, yet not my will but yours, yet not my will but yours.
This morning we have several special prayers. First of all, we pray for the family of Mr. Weekman as his mother Nancy suffered a heart attack last night. But thanks be to God that surgeons brought her through surgery safely, safely and so we pray a prayer of thanks and also for speedy recovery. Also, we have many students traveling right now, either for vacation or about to leave on vacation for the civil rights tour. Uh, but also, we have several students who will be leaving us right now. Given a special opportunity to return home for the first time, perhaps in two to three years, several of our students from Vietnam will be returning home this weekend. Kate, Holly, Quang, An, Han, and Jack will all be returning back to Vietnam this weekend. They will remain virtual students with us the rest of the year. We'll pray for God's guidance on them and that God be with them as they go. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, you are the God of land and sea, wind and wave. You guide our comings and our goings, our travels of business and of pleasure. We ask for your care, protection, and provision for all who travel over this coming break. Be with our students and faculty on the civil rights tour right now. Bring blessings through learning, discovery, and discussion, and bring them safely home. Be with all students, faculty, and staff who travel on vacation in the coming week. Bring them rest and relaxation so as to return safely home, ready for school and work. We also pray today that you be with Kate, Quang, Holly, An, Jack, and Han as they return home this weekend to their home country of Vietnam. God, we give you thanks for the time they have spent with us at Wisconsin Lutheran High School, yet we also thank you for their opportunity to return home finally to see their families. Even as you guide their journey home, guide them on the journey of life. Continue to be with them each day with your loving care. And keep the cross of your Son, Jesus Christ, before their eyes each day, that someday soon we might reunite with them in our heavenly home. Finally, dear Lord, as the great physician and healer, we also entrust to your care the mother of Mr. Weekman, who suffered a heart attack last night. We thank and praise you for doctors and nurses who skillfully attended to Nancy's care and that she was successfully brought through surgery. Now we ask for a speedy recovery to full health. Tend to the needs of your dear sheep as her loving good shepherd. All these things we bring before you with confident trust, knowing that you will act in love and according to your will. We pray through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Join me please in a responsive prayer and a singing of a hymn. Lord Jesus Christ, you have been tempted in every way just as we have, yet you are perfect and without sin. Give us strength also to stand firm against the evil one. Lord Jesus Christ, you stood on trial before those filled with hate, yet you silently went as a lamb to the slaughter. Give us thankful hearts that though you were innocent, you were declared guilty for our sake.
Lord Jesus Christ, you lived a life of righteous perfection, yet you carried on yourself the sins of the world. Give us hearts filled with awe and wonder for the sacrifice you completed in our place. Lord Jesus Christ, you paid the wages of sin with your death, yet the tomb could not hold you forever. Give us joy knowing your victory, that because you live, we shall live. join to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Friends, God bless your worship and your meditation on our Savior tonight, tomorrow, and on joyous Easter morning.